This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Audrey Cunningham, an 11-year-old little girl, should have been living life with her friends, running outside, playing, having a great time with the safety of her grandparents and her father watching over her. However, that's not what happened. Because grandma and grandpa and dad thought, you know, what would be the best thing to bring onto our property? Not a new swing set, not a new seesaw, not a bunch of fun toys or a sandbox. How about a Nazi? Let's bring a Nazi onto the property. And, oh, yeah, he's Aryan uh, Brotherhood as well. That just seems like the, the type of great guy we should have watching our little girl, taking her to school. Because we're Christian. That's what Christians do. That's at least been the... The modus operandi we've seen thus far in this case. Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author, joining us to discuss this. Siobhan, I want to start with a recent interview that was given by the grandparents uh, about this case uh, and about everything that happened. Uh, Literally, uh, Audrey was not buried even yet when this took place. Um, But they're all about creating legislation, uh, which, you know, great. I, I think that's a great idea. I'm just really curious about the timing, the emotions of all this, and and why we're being so quick to look over there, look over there, look over there. It's mm-hmm. not any, you know, we might have screwed this up. Let's take a listen and I'll get uh, get your reaction to it. You were aware of his history and you were going to give him a second chance like a lot of people were passing over on him and you went a step further and you checked that registry. Did you feel that that gave you peace of mind and that you did your due diligence? before letting somebody stay here? I did. That was our largest concern, you know, because I think people have come to depend on the registry to, I mean, you look on it and unfortunately that is part of our society. And some of it is earned. Some, Some of them are truly needed to be on the registry some of them were just they got caught up in the moment and they wound up on the registry so there is gray areas in the registry but then there's a big dark hole where people who committed a sexual assault wound up plea bargaining down to a misdemeanor and because it's only a misdemeanor, they didn't have to register. That's the hole that we want to work on closing. The floor is yours. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Talk about um, failing to take responsibility for some abysmal judgment on their part. It's another example of really misguided faith. You know, Mm -hmm. if if we think we're doing the right thing because we're Christians by giving this guy another chance, take a look at him. And even if he had not been, you know, a sex offender, pedophile, murderer, he this was not a stellar person that you want around your children. Maybe give him a chance in a halfway house, you know, for for people like him. But um, just abysmal, abysmal judgment on their part. And and they still don't get it. And they're, you know, yeah, we do need to change the laws there in that state where it's, you know, you're allowed to plea and, and you know, not end up on the registry. Sure. But the minimizing that, oh, well, there are all these gray areas with people on the registry. Somebody just got caught up in the moment. It's like, you have to wonder how they function in life. How often do they get caught up in the moment and therefore they're not responsible? That's weird thinking. It's a weird, I mean, notice the amount of information he's volunteering that he wasn't even asked about. Nobody said, well, what do you think about the the sex offender registry and the different uh, people that are on there? Uh, you know, different. He's he's literally justifying rape because yes. somebody was caught up in the moment. Caught up in the moment. Like, yeah. Who does yeah. that other than a rapist? Yeah. You know, and exactly. I'm, I'm not calling him a rapist, but. Who else does that? <laughs> yeah. You wonder about the thinking process going on in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really strange, really concerning, and that poor child just didn't have a chance. What was your observation on 
the setup as well. If people are listening to us, they're not seeing this. If you watch it on YouTube, you can see what we're talking about on our YouTube channel. Uh, but it was like, it was a whole set. Like they had their t-shirts on, they had their uniforms basically with Audrey's picture and wings and then behind, and it was color coordinated too. Purple was the color, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, and then in, in the background, there's literally all of these pictures of Audrey up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen a lot of interviews of grieving families and such, and, and they don't usually necessarily have a set that they built no. to, no. to make their argument or, or to, to express their emotions here. Uh, that, that seemed a little off as well. Yeah, it looked like staging, mm -hmm. and and that has a very bizarre quality because again, we put ourselves in in this kind of situation, we would be so distraught. That would be the last thing, or oh, we're going to wear our matching t shirts. You know, it's yeah. it's indicative of a very strange thinking pattern going on with these folks. Sick of the ads? We opt to start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.